What is going on guys? Evan Aldo here. I am in Bangkok, Thailand right now. Um, great view on the 32nd floor here. The skyline of this city is just incredible. I don't know how, how good you guys are able to see it, but man, this is a crazy time, a crazy time, especially for crypto. You got Bitcoin, you know, at essentially we passed above new all made new all time highs slightly the other day. Now we're back down. I mean, the debate is, do we, is this where we, you know, kind of reject or do we keep going? You know, it's, it's, it's just crazy, but you know, the next kind of spiral line area, spiral line pocket, that mid 70 K, you know, kind of range right there, high time frames. you know, high time frames do look like there could be a decent shot of continuation, decent shot to keep kind of going. So it's just, you know, it's that wild, um, wild kind of, you know, environment guys, man, just trying to mess around with the lighting here a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys can see kind of the cool background. Okay. Yeah. This is better lighting for filming kind of back here, but anyway, so that's what we're looking at right now. I mean, I don't see any, you know, significant reason to, you know, sell and take major profits at the moment. I'm not seeing that that could change you know, in the coming weeks that could definitely change. But as of right now, it still looks good. A lot of altcoins still look pretty good. Total three still looks pretty good. It looks like we got a good, you know, year ahead of ourselves. We could have some, a good amount of time generally ahead of ourselves in the macro. Now, obviously nothing is going to go up and to the right forever. We know that there's going to be a correction at some point. What's probably going to happen here. If you compare it to kind of 2016, that was a halving year. And the cycle has kind of looked like 2016. You know, there's been a lot of, been a lot of similarities to kind of 2016. And ultimately, you know, if we do kind of follow that, you look at, you know, post having and having is coming up end of April, you look at post having, and that was kind of when you had, when you had that correction, when you had that kind of correction. Now, what could that correction be? I mean, if it's like 2021, someone may walk away, that type of deal, that's a 50% correction, essentially. It could be less, it could be 30%, it could be 25%. My guess here is that we generally stay neutral, at least neutral to more bullish into mid-April. So I would give it, you know, what are we, beginning of March, neutral to more bullish into mid-April. I think some alts could really ride, especially, and I think ETH could, continue to generally up over Bitcoin. It looks very good on its Bitcoin, you know, pair. Um, and ultimately, you know, I think we're going to stay there. And I think that you look at post having, I think that's when you see sell in May, you see walk away, you, you see that type of stuff and you see a summer lull. Typically summers are more boring for Bitcoin. Typically they're not, you know, last summer, very boring, more bearish. You eventually broke downward. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think 2022 summer was, well, beginning of it, okay, end of it, you kind of were recovering 2022 summer. I mean, June, you came down obviously, but 21 summer, and this is, you know, it's looks like 21 in some ways. And I think you might kind of look like this year kind of might look like 21 in a lot of ways. You get that summer lull. The other thing that's coming up too, the fed potentially pivoting, it's favored for them to pivot in June. When contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think, you know, Fed, Fed pivoting, money printing, that's going to make, you know, everything just go crazy, crazy upward. Typically, things do dump down as soon as the Fed pivots. Things do dump down for a bit as soon as the Fed pivots. Now, my guess is that that would be a summer lull. You'd see a summer kind of drop down. Maybe you peak out pre-having or around the having, turns into a sell the news thing, and then Fed pivoting makes it a little bit more bearish. So you have you know, a good bearish May, a bearish June, July, maybe like May, June, July, like two to three months of bearishness. And then towards the end of the summer, um, second half of the year, I mean, I would say the most likely bearish months are going to be May, June, and then July tougher to say, but I would say, think August to the end of the year, or at least August to the election for obvious reasons, you would see that kind of jump up. You would see that recovery. You would see things start to kind of come back. That's what I would generally kind of um, guess here. I would generally kind of guess that that's what you would kind of see. And ultimately, yeah, that's just kind of what I'm thinking. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So when would the place to take some profits make the most sense? Probably 
early to mid-April, probably early to mid-April. So I think we got at least another month here. That could change. You know, I'm always looking at the charts. I'm always, you know, watching what's happening here. And, you know, it's been a crazy ride. And I think, you know, I just learned more and more things about these markets. I've learned more and more things, you know, about trading. I've learned more and more things and, you know, been doing incredible in the Discord. I mean, I know a lot of people like to, you know, say, and, I, I, and I'll agree, you know, everybody's a genius in the bull market. You know, everybody's a genius in the bull market. But I've been really happy. A lot of really good leverage trades. You know, if you guys are interested in that, check out the link down below for the Discord. Um, I don't think you guys will be disappointed. A lot of really good stuff in there. We're still doing our, you know, one month. If you want one free month in Discord, if you sign up to any of the exchange links down below, such as Fairdesk, you know, MXC, ZoomX, they're all great. Um, and deposit at least $100 and um, open a support ticket in the free Discord with your UID. I will give you one free month there. So check that out. I'm trying to do that promo, I'm trying to get people exposure to it and um, show people that there's a lot of good opportunities in trading. Obviously, you know, leverage trading is risky. You got to be careful. You know, there's a lot of, you know, over the core, there's a lot of things I could say about it. A lot of things I could say about it, but you know, I, I do it all, you know, that accumulation. I mean, the main thing too, the main thing too is, you know, we're getting to the end of that accumulation window. Now, I know I just said the time to theoretically, theoretically sell, not, not sell for a while, but theoretically the place that we would see a top, I think would be mid to early April. That's at the same place where I'm kind of stopping, you know, DCing in and I've been DCing into alts essentially since October. You know, we've talked about that. I think I started, yeah, I think I started October, maybe a little bit in September, tiny bit over the summer, but really the alt accumulation was from October to April. So it's about, let's see, about a six month period of alt accumulation. We're getting to the end of that. So pretty much all my alt holdings are, you know, what I have and what I'm going to hold. And maybe, you know, maybe come like early to mid April, I'm planning on holding these until at least April of 2025 for long-term capital gains, about a year, holding some stuff for about a year for long-term capital gains makes a lot of sense. You got to be smart with, smart with your taxes, especially if you're in, you know, a place where the, like the U.S., if you hold more than a year, a year or longer, you, um, you, you have to pay a lot less and you pay less in taxes, significantly less. So that's a, a thing to realize there. And I think it fits in with the four year cycle kind of as well on when we would likely, you know, kind of top out here. And that's what I'm looking at there. So we're getting to the end of that kind of window. And then once you're at the end of the window, you kind of wait, um, you know, at that same area, at the place, which would make sense at the place that you stop buying, you know, early to mid April, what I'm gonna do, you know, you're ahead a lot. <laughs> It's kind of the same place, you know, it's the place you're stop buying is the place, take maybe a little bit of profits, maybe a little bit, but not, you know, it depends who you are, <laughs> you know, it depends. I know I'm kind of going on, but it depends, you know, it depends, you know, what, what you're thinking here, you know, it depends. Like, do you have debt that you want to pay off? Do you have a car loan that you want to pay off? Do you have a mortgage that you want to pay off? You know, it, it, it really depends what you want to use that for and what your situation is. So that's, that's all I'm going to say about that right now. So that's what I'm looking at in the, um, in the kind of the crypto market. So obviously really exciting time, you know, in terms of FOMO, in terms of new people getting into it, there are some, it's nothing that concerning at the moment. I think I'm not seeing anything extremely concerning where it's a major, you know, macro top signal, but we will have that, you know, kind of correction that, I mean, 30%, if we do come up to what's 30% of 75, I don't know. Maybe that's down to like 40%, 40 something K I, I would assume. And the good thing about that correction when it does happen is probably a lot of alts will hold up pretty well against Bitcoin for the first time. Um, once, especially if you do see that after the Fed pivots, because once the Fed pivots, more li excess liquidity in the market, alts will likely start to really outperform Bitcoin. So that's the, that's the important thing here. Last thing I'm going to talk about in this video, let's change the subject a little bit. You know, like I mentioned, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. It's an amazing city. Amazing, amazing place. A lot of, so many things to do here. A lot of amazing people. Um, and you know, you look at, you know, in the, in the US and Western Europe, things are, you know, I think the US is always the most expensive place to live. You know, things are very expensive. You know, it, I, I think you're at a point where, you know, if you can kind of live somewhere else and work remotely, 
you probably, you probably should. It, dep it depends on who you are, but I mean, the more and more I travel to these other places, the more and more I see b people doing things right, <laughs> you know? I, I see uh, things going right and these countries going in the right, you know, really the right direction. A lot of things, you know, that, that are, uh, it's hard to explain, but I mean, you know, we all know America's kind of declined at least a little bit in the last, you know, decade, last two decades. And I think that's kind of the, the trajectory in a lot of other places have inclined, have increased, you know, got improved over the last few decades. So that's, you know, that's the, you know, important, you know, kind of thing to realize. That's the important kind of thing to realize here. And that view is just spectacular. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot, you know, travel is awesome. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, things that I think about. I mean, culturally, Bangkok is a really great place. A lot of great places in Southeast Asia um, to explore, to see, you know, it, it is spectacular. It is it's something everybody should do, I think. I mean, everybody has different, you know, interests, different needs, but I really, really have enjoyed it. So that's all I'm going to talk about right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're new, welcome. Goodbye, guys.